Francis LVMH is among the biggest conglomerates here at Baselworld. Earlier, I met Jean-Claude Biver, currently chief executive of the group's Hublot brand, who just this month has taken control of its entire watches division, including Tag Heuer and Zenith. I started by asking him what he hopes to achieve from his time here at Baselworld. A size a brand like Hublot will sell here 200 million, but we are doing two fairs. We did the fair in Geneva, which was in January, where we also sold 200 million. So, end of this fair, Geneva plus um, uh, Basel, we will end up at 400 million, which is a lot. But we are a very uh, uh, upgraded uh, company. Now, another company like Tag Heuer, which is uh, on another price level, they don't have the same cycles. For them, Basel is important, but never in that sense. So the more, the bigger your brand, eventually the less you might sell here. Where are the new markets? Where are you seeing growth? The new markets are still the same. I see growth in China. You're going to say, yes, but China went down. Yes, it went down. But it went down in order to consolidate. And a consolidated market is much safer than an inflated market. So China growth is there. Maybe not, under, maybe not uh, 20% this year, but growth is definitely for the next 5, 10 years in China. We have growth in India, for sure. We have growth in Indonesia, for sure. We have growth in Japan, again. We have growth in America, again. We have growth in uh, Latin America. We have growth in the Middle East. We still have growth in Russia, still selling watches in Ukraine, still doing well in Kazakhstan. So more or less, you could say today, growth is everywhere included in Europe, in the old Europe, because mainly because of travel business. So that is why everybody in this fair is so optimistic. Some say, yes, we're going to do 6 to 8% more than last year. And I say, we might do between 3 and 5% more. But this optimism that is shared by everybody in the fair comes as is a result that when you analyze, you see growth coming from everywhere. And the consolidation that you talk about in China, there's quite dramatic falls for Swiss ex exports of Swiss watches to China. They don't concern you? I think last year, I, I don't have the number, I think China dropped by 10 or 15 percent. But it didn't avoid the Swiss watch industry, although China dropped by maybe 15 percent, it doesn't avoid the Swiss watch industry to do another record year. And we did another record year in 2013, despite the drop of China, which tells you what was dropping here, we could catch up on other places. There was a story this week in the Financial Times that said that LVMH, the watch division at LVMH, has the potential for growth. How do you plan to achieve that? OK, uh, we have growth potential for sure. I mean, uh, we, I, I would be an idiot if I would say the, the opposite. We must have growth potential. We must work on this uh, potential. And uh, we have to go on first, uh, keep the work that has been done. But we have constantly to, I believe, in innovation. In, I say sometimes to my teams, guys, no innovation, no future. I believe that through innovation, being close to the market, uh, having people that understand the market. You know, the watch business is a very little business. It's 22 billion per year. I think Apple is doing it in three weeks. <laughs> this turnover. So we are a microscopic market. And the watches is so special. Uh, there are so little quantities. The, it's even not an industry with 22 billion. It's an artisanal. So, uh, we need people who understand the market, who are close to the market, who are experienced. And we need to incorporate young people so that we can transfer our knowledge, our visions to these people. Jean-Claude Biver, thank you very much. Thank you.